What is up everyone? Welcome to today's video and today we're going to be going over a pretty easy leak code problem and that's merging two sorted link lists into one merged sorted link list. So let's say you're given L1 and L2 or essentially the starting node of this link list and the starting node of this link list. So you're given two link lists, right? And you're basically asked to merge these two link lists that are sorted into one sorted merged link list, just like this one. As you can see here, one, two, three, four, five, six, it has all the nodes from these two lists and it's sorted, right? So how we can actually do this is really not that hard. So let's actually consider how we can do this. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna actually create something called a head, right? And the head is really just the, the node that we're going to create at the beginning. It doesn't really have to have a value. It's just to allow us to basically access the starting point of our list, right? So once we actually create our list, we can just say head.next at the end of our function. And that is going to basically return the starting point of our linked list, right? And you'll see that when once we actually finish this and do the code, exactly how that works. And we're also going to have another variable call it current. And current is really what it sounds like. It's just the, the current node that we're at in our uh, new link list that we're creating. It's the current node that we're at, just so we can uh, keep track of which node we're at. And then L1 and L2 are going to be the variables of which current node we're at in this uh, list, and then which current node we're at in this list, right? And it's gonna change as we traverse the list. So what we wanna do is we wanna create a while loop and essentially the while loop is going to keep running and iterating as long as L1 and L2 are both not equal to null, right? So as long as L1 and L2 are actually equal to a node and not null, that means that we're going to keep going, right? So the first iteration, we're going to check. The first thing we're going to check in the loop is, is L1.value less than L2 dot value, right? So in this case, is one less than three? Well, it is. So what we have to do in this case is pretty simple. We just have to actually set the next node to be equal to L1, right? Because it makes the most sense since one is less than three. So naturally the next node in our linked list should be L1, right? So we would say current dot next, man, I need new markers, is equal to L1, right? So essentially current is here, right? So the next node after current is going to be L1 because L1 is, has a value of one, which is smaller than three. So we're going to basically set the next node to be L1, right? The next thing we wanna do is we wanna say L1 has to be to equal to L1 dot next. So essentially we're just gonna move the node L1 to be equal to the next node in this linked list, right? Because we wanna keep track of where we're currently at in this linked list and what we've already went through and what we need to look at, right? So once we have that done, we actually need to just do one last thing and that is to set current to be equal to current dot next. So since current is here, we also wanna keep track of where are we at in our current linked list that we're creating, right? The new merge linked list. So we have to naturally move current and keep it updated to where we're at, right? So the current value is now here, right? So now we've done this first iteration. So the next iteration, same idea, is L1, the value L1 less than L2. In this case, yeah, it, is, it still is. So essentially we're gonna do the same logic. We set uh, current.next is equal to L1. So basically the next is actually going to be here and then we set L1 to be equal to L1.next. So we have to move L1 up further to the next node, right? And then we have to move current as well to stay updated. So current actually is going to move here, right? So, so far our node is head one, two, right? And then same idea, next, next iteration is L1, so the value of L1, four is less than the value of L2, three. In this case, it's not. So we do the exact same thing here, but we just change it to L2. So essentially, this is just going to be, um, current.next is going to be equal to L2, and then L2 is going to be equal to L2.next, 
And so essentially, current.next here, the next uh, the next node after current is going to be equal to L2, which is actually here, right? And then L2 is going to be L2 is going to be equal to L2.next, right? So now L2 is here. And then again, current has to be updated as well. So current is now here. So by now, hopefully you get the idea. And let's just, you know, just kind of go through this without needing to iterate. So is four less than five? It is. So the next node naturally is going to be here, right? Okay. And so let's say we don't have to update this, right? Let's just finish it and then we'll come back. So now we've actually iterated through the entire um, first link list, right? So the current node is actually going to be here, right? And L1 was initially here, but it's going to move here, right? Because L1 is equal to L1.next. So now L1 is actually null, right? And what does that mean? Well, that means the while loop actually has to terminate because our condition was as long as L1 and L2, which is going to be um, here, right? As long as L1 and L2 are both not equal to null. In this case, L2 is not equal to null, but L1 is equal to null. So we have to actually terminate our loop and then what we have to do here is have two if statements, right? So essentially what this if statement is going to do is it's pretty self-explanatory, right? As you can imagine, we've went through this entire list. We've traversed the entire list, right? So we still have to actually add these two nodes to our linked list, right? So we can just add a check after the while loop saying, hey, you know what? If L2 is not equal to null, right? That means that L2 still has not been traversed entirely, right? There's still some nodes that we have to add to this linked list, right? And so if that is the case, right, we can just write that. If L2 is not equal to null, then we know that there's still some nodes left. So in this case, we do the same idea. We just say, we can just say, actually, we can just say this. We can just say current dot next is equal to L2. And that's it. Now, why is that? Why is that all we have to do? Well, because we've actually went through the entire first list, right? So there's no more nodes from the first list that we're going to add in our list. So the only thing we can actually add is we're going to set the next to be here. And then we're done. Well, what about this one? What about six? Well, like I said, we don't have to add any more nodes from here. So essentially, when we point to this node to be next, the consecutive nodes that are already connected to this node are just going to stay as they are. So essentially, by default, the next node from here after current, because current is going to switch to here, is going to be six, right? So all you have to do is just point to the, the to L2 and you're done. You just, you know, all the consecutive or, or the other nodes that are connected to L2 are automatically going to be part of their new merged link list, right? Because there's no other nodes that you can actually add, right? And the same goes for if the other way, it was the other way around and actually L2 finished first and L1 still had some nodes to add. So that's why we have two if statements. We have if statement saying if L2 is not equal to null, that means we know for a fact that L2 still has some nodes that we have to actually add. And so we would set the next node to be equal to L2. And otherwise, if L1 is not equal to null, that means L1 has not finished first. And so we have to set the next node to be equal to L1, right? And then all we have to do is say, hey, you know what? Return head.next. And so that's going to return this node, which is the starting point of our linked list. So it's gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, and we're done. That's it. That's how you do it. So we're just gonna go over the code really quickly now. It should be like 25, 30 lines, not too hard. All right, guys, like I said, the code is pretty simple. The first thing we wanna do is create that head node we talked about. And as you can see here, I'm actually going to just use the empty constructor, which has been defined for us here. I don't even need to set a value because I'm not gonna be using that value. And then I'm going to be go creating the oops, the current node, which is initially going to have a value of head. And then I'm going to create that while loop we talked about with the condition being as long as L1 
is not equal to null and L2 is also uh, not equal to null. And then we're going to basically check is the value of L1 less than the value of L2? If that is the case, then essentially what we need to do is update the next value, the next node after current, so current.next to be equal to L1. And then we also have to update L1 to be equal to L1.next. Otherwise, if L2 is greater than or equal to L1, that means that we have to do the same thing, except we have to set the value to be equal to L2. And then we have to update L2 to be equal to L2 dot next. So this is exactly what we talked about in the, in the explanation. And in either case, we have to do one more thing, which is set the current node to be equal to current dot next. So we were updated as to what exact node we're on. And then after the while loop, again, there's two cases we have to consider. The first case is that um, the second, uh, so L2 has been iterated or traversed through entirely. So as long, so if L1 is not equal to null, that means that L2 has been traversed through entirely and there's still some nodes left in L1 that we have to actually add to the um, list. So current.next is equal to L1. And so all the nodes from L1 forward are going to be added to the list. Otherwise, if L2 is not equal to null, which means that L1 has been traversed through entirely first and L2 still has some nodes remaining in it, we can set the current.next to be equal to L2. So now all we have to do is just return head.next, which is really just the first um, node in our created link list. And it should be working now. So if you run this code, Are we good to get the answer? We can submit this. As you can see, we got a pretty good runtime in this specific submission with these test cases, 100% faster than other submissions in this case. So this is a pretty decent solution. Um, and uh, hopefully you guys understood it. Make sure to comment down any questions you have. And thanks for watching. Stay tuned.